Hello guys and welcome to another Thanatoys tutorial video. When I started out doing uh, my business full time a year ago, the majority of my output were these. These I like to call the friend dolls. Now I've since moved on to what I like to think and physically are bigger and better things. However, I still had a few of these bodies and raw prints left, so I figured why not give them one last hurrah? Now, originally what these were, were these kids toys called, I believe, Bush Baby World. Uh, I saw them in a store once and I saw the weird little ugly faces on them and I figured, if I hack those off, if I pry the innards out, I may be able, able to insert my own little freakish parasite in there and create what you see here. Now, let's take a look and how I go about that process. Here are the prints fresh out of the printer after being cleaned, cured and the supports removed. As usual, I'm now hot gluing 3D printed parts to painting handles. These particular ones I designed and 3D printed myself in PLA plastic. Once fixed to the handles, the heads are now ready to prime. Again, I use Molotow primer. From what I understand, Molotow paints are often used in graffiti art, meaning they take priority in making sure that they're as durable as possible, which is perfect for my application. After a couple layers of primer, it is now time for the Xenophil Highlight. Uh, to reiterate, the Xenophil Highlight, in case you're not aware, is effectively emulating a light source by spraying white from the direction that you wish for light to be casting on the model. Once these tonal values are in place, you can then simply airbrush transparent ink over the model to create easy gradients. I like to do the majority of my painting through the airbrush, though it can get a little tricky in those hard to reach at tiny areas. One aspect of the process that does require a brush, however, is the mixing and application of the oil wash. The wash is oil paint diluted with white spirit that I liberally apply to the model and then dab off the excess to generate my signature grunge effect. I'm far from the first person to try this on models, especially in the mini painting world, but I'm pretty sure it's not too much of a common technique in the world of art dolls. Dabbing the excess off a teeth is always a bit of a nightmare, trying to get a nice middle ground between grungy and completely black. I tend to have to go in with a brush to really clean it up properly. I foolishly forgot to film this too, but uh, after the wash stage I apply an oil varnish. Now it's time to apply the eyes. You can make your own, I've uh, done that in the past out of a uh, clear resin, but if memory serves correct I'm pretty sure I just ordered these ones off AliExpress. I pick whichever eyes look the freakish and simply super glue them in. And here's the complete severed head family reunion. Don't they look happy? I give the heads about a day for the varnish to cure, and then I start work on the fabric bodies. After prying out their innards and dyeing a couple of them in Dylon fabric dye, I set them on my airbrushing station and go crazy. For this stage, the paints I use are usually watered down, either simple acrylics or acrylic ink. I start by focusing on the recesses and areas where I want the most shade to be cast, before spraying a less concentrated blast over the rest of the fabric. Once the fabric is completely covered, I then wet my hands and massage the paint into the fabric to get a nice, even blend. Once painted and given a little while to dry, it's time to connect the head. This tends to be a trend of mine with all my work, but uh, I love to use zip ties for this task. I cut holes in the doll to allow me to thread the zip tie through the neckline. And then once the cable tie is all the way through, I can stick the head in and complete the locking mechanism. Now, you might question how sturdy this is, and I've done quite a lot of testing of this, and yeah, it's a, it's a pretty permanent bond, guys. And it even allows for a little bit of neck swivel.
pen locked into place, I can simply cut off the excess of the zip tie and the little tyke is ready. Let's take a look at the final freaks all assembled. Thank you so much for watching guys. Now, at the time of this recording, they the whole set uh, still available from my store. Uh, that may change, but I guarantee there'll still be a couple left and these may very well be the last that I ever make because frankly, you kind of get sick after making a few hundred of these little devils. Uh, please subscribe if you like this kind of content and my stupid face. And uh, yeah, catch you in the next one. Peace.